All right, space fans. It's been way too long since my last Bukla video, so here's a new one. Last week I was checking out some really great tutorials on generative synthesis. Mylar Melodies pointed out, uh, did a great video, and, and he led me to Stevio, who did this amazing prime patch. And in both of those cases, they're living in a different world than I am. They're using Eurorack, they're using Dupfer, and one of the elements that both of them talked a lot about was a sequential switch, in particular the Dupfer A151 quad sequential switch. And what that allows them to do is it allows them to have a lot of different sequencers ready to deliver different sequences and then use that switch to decide which of those sequences it's going to feed into the melody. So I've sort of simulated that situation here. I've got four sequencers in my Bukla 251 um, module here, right here. And, and I can certainly manually select which of those I play. For example, here's, here's the sequence. one but obviously that kind of manual intervention is uh, not at all what generative sequencing is all about we want to you we want to allow the system to actually make those selections so how do we do it we do it by creative creatively using some of these other Bukla modules so let me pan up and around and show you what I'm talking about so the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out how to generate a pattern of, um, of sequence choices. And so here's what we're going to do. We've got a 251 here. And uh, what that's got, we've got four states. And what we want to do is we want to make it so that what's in its state one, it's going to go to the first guy. When it's in state two, it goes to the second, state three, the third, state four, the fourth. That sounds really simple, and it's not that hard, but it just requires a little creativity. Remember, the Bukla 251 has got, I'm sorry, the Bukla 250 has got three CV outputs, CV1 and CV2 for these big knobs, and CV out for the interior time. We're only going to use the... CV1 and CV2. And what we're going to do is we're going to implement a little binary pattern so that in state 1 we're delivering 0, 0. In state 2 we're delivering 0, 1. In state 3, 1, 0. And in state 4, 1, 1. Obviously we could count higher in binary if we uh, add that third one. We could count to 8 instead of counting to 4. Now we're going to deliver these binary encoded numbers up to our 256 quad voltage processor. So let me just put that in the frame there. Nice. So what's going on here is control voltage one comes up here and the top module A, we're feeding that into the selector to either read left or right. And we're also jumping that to module B so that in either case, control voltage one is selecting whether we listen to the left side or listen to the right side. Now, what's that left and right all about? Well, remember, come down here. One and two are going to the A module. Three and four are going to the B module. So let's go back up here. Check this out. So CV1 is selecting whether we listen to 1 or 2 in this module and whether we listen to 3 or 4 in that module. The fun really happens with CV2 because what happens is whichever side we're listening to, left or right, we send those answers down to module C 
and CV2 selects whether we listen to top or bottom. So in this way, we basically can triangulate on which one of these four is going to come out this uh, column. And that blue wire, handily, feeds over to our Mark Verbos uh, 263V voltage quantizer. And the voltage quantizer feeds a little lag processor just to give us a nice little portmanteau. And here is what that sounds like. So when we zoom in here to see what's happening, there's state number one giving us the first sequence, state number two giving us the second, state number three giving us the third, and state number four giving us the fourth. That's awesome. So let's take a little bit of a closer look here. Go down to here. Zoom in nice and tight. That's nice. What's going on? In honor of Stevio and Primes, there are three elements to this sequence. Five to this one, seven to this one, eleven to that one. And we're feeding it with prime divisions of our clock. So two is a prime number, so division two, division three, division five, division seven coming out of the ratchet. And then we have this last little guy here, 24, the, the, the 24 division feeds when we advance this. So for the, for the longest sequence of 11, uh, we're going to get basically two times through that before we're done, or we could get uh, eight times through the uh, short sequence. So that's kind of cool. Now there's one other thing I really want to check out in this video. I've explained what I came to explain, but I also want your opinion on how we light this. So this is party style, all the lights are up, that's kind of cool, but I also want to try out a couple of performance modes where we shut the lights down and let the Buchla do more of the speaking. And before I go, I almost forgot, but how could I forget this? I did want to treat one subject, which is what if we wanted to do more than a quad sequential switch? Well, guess what? We have lots of modules. And what we could do, if we really wanted to, is, uh, you can see it here, we could take this third CV output and we could use this as a selector for whether listening to the module in the left boat or the module in the right boat. So if we wire up the other side exactly the same as we did here and select between four other sequencers, this last guy here could select which of these two modules in module D. So this quad sequential processor can give us um, an eight-way sequential switch if we really wanted to go crazy. But in the meantime, I'm going to go and I'm going to reframe this so we can see all those beautiful modules. There we go. Or at least all the ones that are busy right now. And uh, we will let that run a little bit. And we'll also switch the lighting so we can check out this uh, alternative. 